Yes. Okay, Saints. Having a few technical difficulties and those that uh, are trying to get in, they'll have to they'll have to sign back in. Uh, but uh, here we go. Here we go. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven. Thank you for this blessed day, dear God. Thank you for our lives. And Lord, what we're very grateful for is you. What an awesome God that you are. And what a privilege it is for us to learn more and more about you, to worship you, dear God, uh, to call upon you in prayer. Lord, we ask right now in the name of Jesus that you help our understanding as we study Psalm 10 together, Heavenly Father. Uh, and, and Lord, may we apply it uh, to so many aspects of our life, dear God, because I know that you are a God of justice. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. So saints, uh, good morning and and. We are going to be studying a standalone lesson today, and the reason that it is, and it's 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 in, it's entitled "A Cry for Justice," a cry for justice. And the reason that it is a standalone lesson is that uh, since 1984, uh, this Sunday, uh, the third Sunday in January of every year is known as Sanctity of Human Life Sunday. And why is that? It's because it was near uh, the the anniversary of the Roe versus Wade decision. President Reagan, when he got in office, he designated at that time, January 22nd was the third Sunday in uh, 1984. Uh, and he designated it as Sanctity of, of, of Life Sunday. And it's so there's a special lesson and there are different sermons that are given around the country. Not everywhere, because everybody doesn't quite believe that. Uh, it, uh, you know, unfortunately. Uh, and we all know that the Supreme Court uh, overturned Roe v. Wade decision last year <clears throat> in 2022. Uh, not last year, year before last. In 2022, they over overturned it. Uh, now, what they did is uh, they outlawed the law that said that it was a federal right. It's no longer a federal right to get an abortion. And they left it up to individual states, uh, like the state of Oklahoma. We have a very uh, tough uh, abortion law, uh, Texas. Uh, and however, there's some states uh, that <clears throat> Their, their abortion laws are very liberal. And as a matter of fact, uh, you know, I saw a story not too long ago <clears throat> about this lady in Texas that traveled to Pennsylvania or New York or someplace so that she could get an abortion. Uh, so that's what that, that's what that means. But what I want you to focus on today is this is not just an anti-abortion lesson. It's included in that, but it's not just that. I, I subscribe and I, I love the fact that there are many preachers around America that, teach, that teaches that, uh, uh, that from the womb to the tomb, <laughs> There ought to be justice. There ought, ought, ought to. There ought to be justice. Uh, and 
the uh, because there are many other ways that there, as we know that there's injustice in this country and and, and when I say injustice it toward the defenseless so I want you to look at it that way we'll talk about that but certainly abortion is included in that included in that because there's uh, n no one can I mean the the pre-born the unborn can't speak for themselves and they need people to speak uh, for them I also recognize that God is a forgiving God. I may be talking to someone this morning that had an abortion or they, they suggested it uh, uh, to, uh, if, you know, if it's a man, uh, to a woman that they had a relationship with. But thank God that he is a forgiving God and that this is a lesson that needs to be taught with some sensitivity and I hope as, as when you leave this when we leave this lesson today you'll say yeah it was approached with sensitivity but at the same time you can't sugarcoat hey man you cannot sugarcoat hey, I, I, I'm, I'm not representing a political party this morning I, I'm representing God hey, amen <laughs> is, is, is what I'm is what I'm doing but the, again, the sanctity of human life applies to so many things. You know, there are children that are that struggle with pornography, and there are people that 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 uh, they uh, try to induce these children. And again, I, I I saw a report just uh, recently about this this mother. I was I was watching a, a news program. <clears throat> And this mother, her her son committed suicide because somebody he he took some pictures of different parts of his body, and they this happens all of, this is in America, y'all in America today right now. I mean, it it, it every few minutes uh, you have to be careful with them on their devices. All right, uh, but w w the person bribed them, said extorted them, tried to extort them. And then what they tried to do, if they if they've got some money, uh, and it, it it may be money that they inherited or money in the business, something, but they they would extort these kids and say, if you don't pay such and such, then I'm going to put it on the uh, internet. It's going to be all over the internet, and that that that, that young person killed himself. Uh, and that happens uh, quite often in this country, saying so. Unfortunately, uh, there's euthanasia. I'm concerned about that because of who I am <laughs> with with uh, with my gray hair with, as I get older. Amen. Uh, uh, I because that has to do with older people as well. Uh, racism. We know. Amen. When you talk about injustice is is a major issue in this country. Uh, slavery. There are more people enslaved today than there was in the 1800s. Shocking. And you know what? A lot of them are children. If y'all haven't seen that movie, Cry Freedom, I suggest you watch that movie. It will shock you. It, 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 it's sad. And it's based on a true story. Uh, a true story. So there's all types of injustice I mean, there, there are people that are in prison that should not be in prison. Amen. <laughs> uh, so, so this is a broad subject. Uh, and we're going to see, we're going to learn some things from David uh, as we look at this, uh, as we look at this psalm together today. And I'm going to ask Brother Maury to read, but Maury, I want you to read out of the Bible. I know that all of the printed text is not in the scripture, and I understand why writers do that. But I want us to read, if you would read that entire 10th Psalm, please. Can't hear you. Why standest thou afar off? 
O Lord, why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride do persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the device that they have imagined. For the wicked boasted of his heart, desire, and blessed the covenants whom the Lord abhorred. The wicked, through the pride of his contentness, would not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffed at them. He had said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages and the secret places do it he murdered the innocent. His eyes are trivial, privily set against the poor. He lieth in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lieth in wait to catch the poor. He doeth catch the poor, but he draweth him into his net. He crouched and humbled himself, that the poor may fall by his strong ones. He has said in his heart, God had forgotten. He hid in his face. He would never see it. Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up thy hand, forget not the humble. Wherefore do it the wicked? Contempt God. He has said in his heart, Thou art not required. I have seen it, for thou beholdest mischief and spite. To require it with thy hand, the poor committed himself unto thee. Thou art the helper of the fatherless. Break though the arm of the wicked and the evil man. Seek out his wickedness till thou find none. The Lord is king forever and ever. The heathen are perished out of his gate, out of his land. Lord, thou hast heard the desire of the humble. Thou will prepare thy heart. Thou will cast thy ear to hear. To judge the fatherless and the oppressed, that the man of the earth may not more, will no more oppress. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Maury. If you haven't wondered, and I'm sure you have, whether it was about yourself or somebody else that you you know, you may, you may have asked the question, why do bad things happen to good people? You may, you may have asked that question. This is a question that's been asked down through the centuries. And when we look at this, this Psalm, Psalm 10, it is, David asking that question. Now, here's something that I want you to think about, because I know we don't normally pray this way. David is praying. <laughs> he's talking to God. And he's talking strong to God. Amen. <laughs> when we look at this text. Because he's saying, couple of things. God, why are the evil winning? Why are they prospering? It's not the, this is not the last time that David asked that, right? Uh, one, of, one of your favorite Psalms may be Psalm 37. Amen. Uh, it, but it, it was, it was something that, that, that 
David struggled with. And, and then he also wanted to know, well, God, where are you? Why are you so far away when we look at this scripture today? And he spends the first 11 verses just, just talking to God, laying out what the issues are uh, and presenting them to God. And I said, David, this Psalm is not, when you look at the superscription, if you look at Psalm nine, it says it's a Psalm of David. It does not say that about Psalm 10. However, there are plenty that believe that Psalm 10 and nine really went together, but it was separated because in Psalm nine, David is given thanksgiving. <laughs> and when it comes to Psalm 10, it's a lament. And what a lament is, is you crying out in sorrow. It's an expression of deep sorrow that you feel over something that's happening in your life. Have you ever lamented? I know you have. Amen. I have too. A amen. And it wasn't just at a funeral either. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it may have been something that somebody said about me, that said about you, and we may have lamented. So uh, this is what David is doing. And what he's doing is he's talking about a wicked person. A wicked person is somebody that is selfish. They are out for themselves. They will abuse other people in order to get what they want. Amen. That is a wicked person. Now, I'm going to say something about that a little bit earlier because uh, let a man examine himself. Amen. And, and we ought to be challenged in this area also. Um, when, you, when you look at the scripture, look at some of the character and activity of the wicked person. And let, let's look at it together. And I hope you have your Bible open in that tenth chapter because we're gonna we're gonna talk about more than verses one through four and uh, and uh, twelve through eighteen. Uh, uh, and and it, it it starts out in verse one. He 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 talks about God hiding Himself, right? Uh, in the times of trouble. Where are you, God? Verse two, look at the wicked. And I want you to underline if it's your Bible. Amen. I mean, if, even if it's a church Bible, that ain't that bad to underline this word. Pride, pride, amen. Uh, uh, underline that word, pride. Uh, uh, because the wicked take pride in persecuting. They celebrate the fact that they may be punishing some, someone, someone that's innocent. Amen. Uh, and verse three, he boasted. Wow. Uh, again, that, that, they're happy about what they're doing and they think they're right in what they're doing. That's the sad part about it, right? They really think that they're right in, in, in what they're doing. Does that not describe this world? Abortion is going to be a big issue in this year's election. In fact, our current president is using it as a major platform in order to get him reelected because 57% of Americans said, that, hey, we ought to have, it ought to be a right. It ought to be a federal right for a woman to get an abortion. And so that, that's going to be a major issue that they're going to play on. So they, they'll look at that and they'll say, hey, I'm right. I'm right in, in, what, I'm, in what I'm doing. Y'all, I'm not talking politics this morning. I have to give illustrations about politics, so. Amen. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there you look at verse four again. Uh, there's the word pride. 
uh, and and this person, so, something else is characteristic of a person that is wicked. They don't seek God. God is definitely not even second place in their lives. Amen. It, it, they don't seek after God. God is not, it says, in all his thoughts. Don't, don't think about it. Don't, don't think about God. Uh, verse 5, he does things to prosper from punishing other people. It may be talking about somebody else. And they get pleasure out of that. <laughs> and, and that's wicked, y'all. That is not of God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that person says these things in his heart. Jesus, Jesus said that, remember? He said it's not, it's not the stuff on the outside that corrupts, but it's your corruption comes from the inside. So the things that you speak really, woo, now y'all get ready to duck a little bit. It really reveals what your heart is. You may say, I love you, <laughs> but, your, but the things that you say and what you do, because it's not only what you say, it's what you, because what you say is gonna, it's gonna translate into your life and into your actions as, as, as well. Uh, and so he says these things in his heart. Amen. Uh, his, do you like to curse? <laughs> this is, and, and of course the cursing that's talking about here, this person, this wicked person curses God. Amen. But also other people as well. Cursed, cursed, cursed them. Amen. Uh, Verse eight, don't you like the way, let me back up and let me say this. Don't you like the way David uh, or the, whoever the psalmist is? And, and, and for, uh, because it doesn't give specific credit to David writing this, but whoever it is, it's the word of God. Amen. That, that's important. And this is the word of God. This is God breathed. This is a prayer. Did you know you could pray that way? Amen. You can pray Psalm 10 and, and you can pray like David. And, and uh, it, it's just, it's just like David's talking to his friend. You know how we are. You got a good friend and there's an injustice uh, against you. You feel like you're being unjustly treated and you will lay it out. Once when you're talking to him on the phone, or in person, you go, you go, you chronicle moment by moment <laughs> the things that happen. That's what David is doing here. He's laying it out. He's saying, "Lord, <laughs> oh man, this this person is a mess." And and so verse eight, he's saying, "This person is ambushing me, or or ambushing the those that are innocent, those those who have." Uh, they're laying in wait, and, and 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 all of a sudden everything's quiet, and this person is so volatile, and all of a sudden they explode and they start saying things, they start doing things. Have, have you ever encountered somebody like that? I know you have. Amen. Uh, that's so, and, and so he's he, it's an analogy where he is comparing it to like an animal. Y'all 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 seen Discovery Channel, right? And, and these animals, I mean, even around your house, amen. I mean, you may have a pet dog, and he's after that squirrel. <laughs> you may have a cat, and he's after a bird or, or, or a mouse or something. Boy, they, they, they sneak up on them, and all of a sudden they pounce. There are people that pounce in your life as well, amen? Uh, because it says he crouches and humbleth himself that poor may fall, in verse 10. By his strong ones. So there are the things I want us to remember about this is pride in verses two, verses three, verses four, and verses six. Amen. Talks about pride. Uh, the uh, 
The other thing is that a wicked person is foul mouth. They have foul mouth. Verses 3 and verses 7. Uh, a wicked person is greedy, selfish, all of themselves. Doesn't matter who they hurt. Amen. Is verses 3, verses 9. And the wicked person is violent. Verses 8 through 10. Uh, and finally, uh, a wicked person is godless. I want you to understand something. To be godless doesn't mean that you don't believe there is no God. If you live like there is no God. Come here now, y'all. I'm, I'm going to talk about that uh, just in a, a few moments. Uh, uh, some signs of that. If you live like there is no God, then you are godless. Even if you say 83% of Americans say that I am a Christian. 83% of Americans. Now, here's a point that I want to make to you. Uh, you know, this, this, this kind of evil has been going on since the beginning of times, saints. It's not new. And yes, it's getting worse. And we shouldn't be surprised at that. Paul talked about it in 2 Timothy 3, that we're going in the last days. And the last days didn't just start uh, with the 20th century or whatever, all right, or the 21st century. It, it's been going on for a while, all right? Because I want to I want to call your attention to 2 Peter 3. See, we 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 look at it different than God. See, a, a day in the sight of God is a thousand years. That's what Peter said, right? The Holy Spirit speaking through him, and 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 a year, uh, I mean, and, and a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day in the in the eyes of God. So this this kind of evil, uh, uh, and yes, it, it's getting worse. And I got news for you; it's probably going to get worse than it is. Let me give you a statistic that I hope shocks you, uh, and it just shows you how plenteous the harvest is. In the 1990s, they did some hard statistics, and they said a third of the people. Now, we're talking about the wicked. Amen, y'all. We're talking about the wicked. A third of the people in the United States of America attended church at least once a month. A third, 33%. Now, keep in mind, I just got to tell you that 83%, and if I ask everybody to raise their hand, are you a Christian? Everybody would say, I'm a Christian. I want you to understand, and we're talking about justice today. Do you live like that? Do you really live as a Christian? I'm not trying, I'm, I'm trying to speak the truth in love, saints, because <laughs> this, 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 this will help us. Uh, and guess what? After COVID, 17% of Americans, I'm talking about one nation under God. Lord have mercy, what a joke, right? Because we're not one nation under God. 17% of, and it's just and it's just one time a month. <laughs> Keep in mind what I just said, that they attend church. They don't care what God's word says about forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. They even teach against, oh, you don't need all that. Amen. Yeah. I, 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 I can get it at home. And, 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 and the, the lack of commitment is so prevalent in their lives. And so uh, he, he, he's saying that uh, he, he, he's despairing over that. And, and, and we should not despair because God is with us. Even in those terrible, in our terrible times, right? Amen. Do you do you believe that today? Now you confess it as a Christian. Listen, listen to us. We say all have what? So why should I be surprised that somebody's using the internet to rob me? <laughs> why should I be surprised that somebody's using the internet to take advantage of innocent children? To rob, to, to take away the money of of, of uh, uh, elderly people who have saved all their lives, and all of a sudden is it is taken away. 
why why is it, it we shouldn't be shocked that people are going by people's houses and picking up packages don't even know what they are and 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 just stealing amen why why should we not be surprised because all have sinned and done what come short of the glory of god so it's a part of our belief system amen i, I i've got to i've got to look at me I, uh, you know, Paul looked at himself and said, hey, I'm the chief of sinners, amen? Uh, so I, just because you've been in church for a minute don't, does not mean that, that uh, you're exempt from sin and, and struggle. Uh, and so we, we don't need, need to be uh, uh, naive about that. And then uh, David was praying that, Lord, don't, don't stay away. You know, he, he, he's praying that there's there's injustice toward and, and, and people are being taken advantage of uh, that the evil are winning but he's also saying that uh, you are too far away and too far away from us and I want to remind you that David what, what the scripture says is that the word in the scripture is God breathed. In other words, he is in the spirit when he's praying these words, saints. That, that, that's, that's why it's a part of scripture. It, uh, it, it's, it's a part of, of scripture. And, and uh, he is, but you know what, what's good about prayer? I love this about prayer. You know, we, we have a saying, don't we? Prayer does what? But I love what one of my former pastors used to say all the time, and uh, and and it's certainly true that n prayer not only changes things, it changes people. Because I want you to contrast two verses. I want you to look at verse one, and because uh, David David makes a strong accusation here, doesn't he? That God, you are standing far off. And 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 he he goes on to talk about many other things about the wicked and the rest of the verse. But when he gets to verse eleven, I want you to look at verse eleven, and he changes it because he's he, he talking about he has said in his heart, uh, God had forgotten; he hideth in his face. In other words, David has come to the conclusion he prayed long enough, <laughs> where he's come to the conclusion. Then I'm acting like the wicked. I'm accusing God of not, and I'm not like the wicked because of the last phrase that he says in that. See, God, you are God that sees. That wicked man may not may, may not see the fact that you see, amen, but you do. And you know what? Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. That 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 is true. If 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 you're treated unjustly, God. Is it, it, it what's important is for us to be on his side, amen. And 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 David David's lining up with the Lord. He's gonna start praising the Lord throughout the rest of this text, isn't he? He's gonna talk about uh, how God sees. He's gonna be uh, and, and 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 so he starts praying, and and he he stops thinking like uh, the the wicked person. He stops thinking like them. Uh, he moves from complaining, stop your complaining, to confidence in God. Amen. He has he has total confidence in in God. So he starts trusting God. He says that God sees, and and I like uh, what what David says in. So so God with his he talks about the eye. He not only talks about the hand. Uh, but he talks about God on his throne, that God, God's all powerful in, 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 in these remaining scriptures, uh, 12 uh, through 14 in, in particular. Uh, and, and when he's talking about the, the, the you're going to break the arm. In other words, you're going to break the power of the wicked. Uh, praise the Lord that, 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 that that's happening. It, it, it happens more often than we might think, amen, as, as evil as the days are that we're in. But David, 
uh, the, the psalmist is saying uh, these things about God. Uh, and there's something else, you know, as we as we wrap up, uh, time just flies, doesn't it, when you're having fun? I don't know about you, I'm having fun talking about this because this helps me. Uh, I, I have been guilty. I have been guilty of being like David. But you know what? I'm not by myself. And I'm I'm uh, I'm going to give you another illustration in a, in a moment. But before I do that, I still want to talk about injustice. I heard an illustration that I love. That I love. What is this? What kind of money? Yeah, thank you. That 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 can see. Amen. <laughs> That's a $20 bill. Amen. I want to use this $20 bill as an illustration. And, and, and you may have had situations like this in your life. I know I have. I have, I've, I've, I've literally had situations like this. Let's say that you're walking along and you see some green paper that's all crumpled up. And, and you pick that green paper up. And it's an older. <laughs> We're going somewhere with this, y'all. Twenty dollar bill, all crumpled up and what have you. What do you do? <laughs> Put it in my pocket <laughs> and keep on stride. And let's say you you stride a little bit, you hit it, you hit it, hit it towards your your, your car, and you see uh, uh, another uh, another twenty. And it's just got a couple of slices in it. And it's it's newer than the last one that 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 you just picked up. Just got yeah, somebody has snipped it with some with some scissors, but it's a twenty dollar bill. What do you do with that twenty dollar bill? You're gonna keep it, you're gonna you're gonna put it in your pocket. Uh, let, let, let's say that you see another twenty dollar bill before you get to your car and it has writing on it where somebody, have you ever seen that in the yeah. store? People write on the dollar bill and for their grocery list, <laughs> what have you. And, and, and it, it's, it's, it's an, it's a newer one, newer bill. And then finally you get, just before you get in your car, you see this nice, crisp, pretty $20 bill. What do you do with all those bills? Why do you keep them? Well, let me, let, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something that's important to remember. Regardless of the situation of all of those bills that I just explained to you, that bill was printed and valued by the United States of America. And it may be crumpled. It may have slits in it. It may have writing on it. It may be a very crisp new one, but all of them, are of the same bag. Hey, when we're talking about justice today, whether I'm old <laughs> and I got all kinds of diseases, I'm still of value. And not because I'm made by the United States of America. I may be unborn, but I have some rights. Hey, Amen. I am, I, 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 I'm valued. By God, you know, I think back to 1973 in college. I, I, I give this illustration all the time. That had just passed. I was aware of that. I may not have been aware of that, and she was, thought I was crazy if I had suggested to her. But I knew abortion was legal, and there were plenty of people that I knew about my age. <laughs> Amen. That was that was one of the that was one of the avenues that they were seeking in order to get out of a pregnancy. Amen. What a tragedy if Jacqueline Michelle Jones Hardy had not been born. Amen. Because a lot of that is out of convenience. It is, it is not because the, uh, the mother's life is at stake or anything like that. That, that unborn child is of value. But so, it, so, is, so am I. Just because of the color of my skin, and 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 I want to go in to get along, <laughs> Amen. Somebody shouldn't discriminate against me 
because of the color of my skin. Shouldn't, we shouldn't discriminate against one another because of the family background that a person may have come from. Shouldn't discriminate against somebody because I've got a tattoo, uh-oh, <laughs> on my face, <laughs> on my arms, and so forth. And so, hey, you don't deserve to get a job because I, I that's injustice, saints. Amen. That, that, there's so many forms of this. I want to close with this. I want to close, and then I'm going to pick up my $20 bill for debt come up here. <laughs> I'm kidding you, Dad. <laughs> uh, Jesus was aware of things like this as well, saints. He, he was aware of things like this. Listen, listen to Jesus as you uh, walk through the scriptures. Remember when he came into his temple and he saw greed. So you can see you can see Jesus in this scripture in Psalm ten, Amen. He 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 saw greed and he because he said that my house is a house of prayer, Amen. And and he took some action, didn't he? He took some action. Not not only do you see Jesus there, uh, Jesus see him uh, talking to the Pharisees saying it's your day right now, but my day is gonna come. And I'm going to judge the world. And, and of course, they, they hated him all uh, the more. Uh, look at Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. He's wondering where God is, too. Y'all hear me? But he, thank God, he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. He's on the cross. He's on the cross, saints. And, 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 and what does he say to his father? Now, not, not about forgiveness. Yeah. Why have you what? Forsaken, forsaken me. Amen. Yeah. Why, why have you forsaken me? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And, and but hallelujah. When we get to Acts, the first chapter, saints. We see him ascending to the Father. When, when, when we get to Ephesians 1, we see that he's on the right-hand side of God. He's standing because he is being glorified by God because of his obedience. In the end, saints, we win. No matter how much injustice there is in this world today, I want you to believe that. Trust that, amen, trust and believe that God is with us and he's got these things under control, amen. You know, I, uh, it's hard for me to sometimes pray for those that are unjust, amen, amen. I, uh, uh, they're, they're, yeah, I'm, I'm, one of these, I'm one of these people and I know it's not real. I'm looking at these movies and man, I just can't wait to that bad character to die. Amen. I, I can't wait. Y'all, 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 uh, I hope I don't offend you when I say this, but you know, I, I like Denzel Washington. I watched his later, latest movie, Equalizer 3. <laughs> and man, there's some bad actors in that, in that show. Amen. And I was so happy when he got them. But you know what? It's not about that, is it? Amen. It's not about that. God's got it. Amen. And, and he is going, it's all right for you to make a cry out for injustice, just like David did. What I want you to believe is that God hears your cry and he will answer every prayer. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Next week, we're going to return back, uh, turn back to our series. And we're going to be talking about the centurion that, that had a servant that was ill. And, and y'all, don't be like that other 83% in America. You come to church. <laughs> you get into the word. Because if when you do, the word gets into you and it makes a difference in your life. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, your word is, is tough, dear God. Amen. And it's for all seasons. 
and it's for all uh, all time, dear God. And thank you, Heavenly Father. Uh, thank you for loving us. I am grateful that you are a God of grace, that you look beyond all my faults. Not only mine, I have brothers and sisters that are here, and you saw our needs. Thank you, Lord. May we be more and more like you. We love you. We praise your name. Help us to worship you in spirit and in truth this day. In Jesus' name, amen. setting of the same, dear yes. God, because you are important to us, Lord. We need you, Heavenly yes. Father, in our lives. And Father, I ask that you would forgive me. Forgive me, Heavenly Father, as I approach the throne of grace today. And I'm so glad that you said that 
if I confess my yes, sins. Yes, and Lord, I say about my sins what you say about them, dear God. Because I want to stand right and I want to be uh, consistent with your word, Heavenly Father. Not according to my feelings. We, uh, in Sunday school, we read a scripture today. And David was caught up in his feelings. And they were leading him in the wrong direction, yes. Heavenly Father. Yes. But Lord, when he started examining who you are. Yes. And, and what you mean to him in his life, Heavenly yes. Father. He had to, to, to confess, dear God. That you are with him always, and there's no way he wanted to be like the wicked. I don't want to be like the wicked, Lord. I want to praise you. I want to worship you yes. in spirit and in truth, dear God. Now, Father, uh, as I pray for those that may be on their way, I, 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 and I pray for those that are here, Lord. We're not here to be seen, yes. but we're here, Heavenly Father, that we might hear your word. And, yes. Lord, we, we need to feed on your word. Because we're hungry and we need it so that we can grow as believers, Heavenly Father. I pray for those who are struggling, not only that are here, Heavenly Father, they may be struggling with uh, some loss in their life, Heavenly Father. It uh, could be loss of employment. It, it could be some attack by the enemy, Heavenly Father. Yes. Lord, you're yes. with us always and we trust you. Yes. Now, Father, uh, we do want to reach more in 2024. Yes. And it calls for all of us, dear God. It, it's not just the pulpit. It's just not the deacon, Heavenly yes, Father. Lord. Yes. It, it, Heavenly Father, but it's all oh, of us, yes, Heavenly Lord. Father. Jesus. And so I pray for power, dear God, yes, in the name of Jesus. Lord. Jesus. Because only that power comes from you yes. and you alone, yes, Heavenly Father. And, and Father, I pray that you would give us a courageous yes. and a willing spirit yes. so we may boldly, wherever we go, yes. Heavenly Father, Declare you, Jesus. Lord. So send me, Lord, Heavenly yes. Father, like Isaiah prayed. Send me, yes. dear God. And may I be obedient to your will and your way. Yes. Now, Father, we just look forward to the word today. Yes. Bless us to receive it and, Lord, to apply it to our lives. Thank you Thank for you. who Thank you are. We love you, dear God. Yes. In the name of Jesus, Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Turn, your, turn your Bibles to Psalm 37. Psalm 37, and uh, uh, we're going to read verses 1 through 11 today, starting with verse 1 is, is our responsive reading, and we'll conclude with verse 11. I'll start us off, Psalm 37. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord, and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger, and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evil do doers shall be cut off. For those well, that wait upon the Lord, yes. they shall inherit the earth. We we have have little little while, while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall, shall be. be. Together, but, but the meek shall inherit the earth, and, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Amen. Amen. Everyone, please join with us. What a friend we have in Jesus.
Lord in prayer. Yes, yes. Bethlehem. Yeah. Great oh, Lord. Y'all miss it. 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 Y'all
and I need you to continue to pray for that in Jesus' name. I want you to pray for myself as I'll be traveling, uh, coming soon for the Preacher's Conference in Sacramento because I continue to believe that it happens after prayer. Amen. 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 And praise the Lord. We're continuing in a series that I've entitled The Yes Series. Yeah. The Yes Series. And I'm challenging the people of God to simply say yes to God in their lives. Challenging the people of God to perpetually say yes in their lives mm -hmm. because God as we learn on New Year's Day and New Year's Eve God has plans for our lives Amen. he has purpose for your life he, he has service for your life but in order for you to feel fulfill God's plan you have to say perpetually yes to the Lord personal testimony. I said yes to the Lord to leave Dallas, Texas to go to Abilene. If I was not a petrally yes sir, I would still be in Abilene today. But God had another assignment. Another assignment that is exceedingly abundantly above anything I could have thought or imagined uh, that I could do here. And uh, I had to say yes again. Literally, uh, that song came on the radio almost every day because I was in a pretty comfortable place there then. And God challenged me to say yes. And God is challenging you to say yes perpetually. Yes, yesterday ain't going to help you today. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, because when you say no to God, you enter into that realm of rebellion. Right. Let me say that again. You say, well, that's, that's pretty harsh, preacher. Why, why is that? Well, what about your kids? You had a kid that was a faithful kid uh, until they was five years old and you told them, take out the trash at six and they said no. Well, hello, somebody. Now they could get away with it, but you knew, you knew parents. <laughs> but when I grew up, hello, somebody, uh, you would dare not say no to your mama. Hello, somebody. Uh, or you, you, you would uh, have to act like you said yes anyway. Hello, somebody. But God, and, and I really want us to get this as a church because there's so much that God wants to do here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church that impacts the world from right here, that impacts the world. But we have to perpetually say yes to God, yes mm -hmm. to God. And... Uh, we're going to share a message today entitled, Yes, Lord, I Will Lead. Yes, Lord, I Will Lead. It's Judges chapter 6. We're going to look at verses 12 through 16. Would you please stand in reference to the word of God? Stand symbolically saying that I will stand on the word of God. Let's read this out loud together at the same time on three. One, two, three. Three. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty, mighty warrior. Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied. But if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all these wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of the living. The Lord turned to him and said, Go into the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. I am not sending you. Pardon me, my Lord. Gideon replied, But how can I save Israel? 
My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. The Lord answered, I will be with you, and you will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alive. Amen. You may be seated in the household of the Lord again. This morning we're sharing a message entitled, Yes, Lord, I will lead. Yes, Lord, I will lead. We're going to speak on around three points. The Holy Spirit gives utterance. We're going to talk about a question about God's presence, a question about God's power, and a question about God's pick. Mm -hmm. A question about God's presence, a question about God's power, and a question about God's pick. We want Christians to know today that Christians should not question God's choice of you well. to lead. And then we'll get to the word. The army of Gideon, trusting the Lord in battle. The people of Israel were blessed for many years, but then they chose to disobey the Lord. To help them remember him, the Lord let their enemies, the Midianites, take their food and animals. The Israelites were starving, so they remembered the Lord and prayed to him for help. Gideon was a man from a poor family. The Lord sent an angel to call him to free Israel. Gideon wondered why the Lord chose him. The Lord told Gideon to destroy places where the Israelites worshipped false gods. When Gideon obeyed, the people were mad. The Israelites wanted to kill Gideon, but Gideon's father convinced them not to hurt him. Gideon was kept safe. Gideon did not think he could free Israel. There were more than 135,000 soldiers in the Midianite army. But the Lord gave Gideon wisdom and strength. The Lord wanted the Israelites to know that they could win with his strength, not their own. Even though Israel had only 32,000 soldiers, the Lord asked Gideon to send home any soldiers who were scared. After 22,000 went home, the Israelites were left with 10,000 soldiers. The Lord said 10,000 was still too many soldiers. He told Gideon to take the army down to the water. Those who drank straight from the water with their mouths would be sent home. Those who used their hands to drink the water could stay. Now only 300 men were left. At last, the Israelites were ready to fight. The Lord showed Gideon how to defeat the Midianites. Gideon told his army to use trumpets and lamps to scare them. The noise and the lights confused the Midianites so much that they started to fight each other. Then they cried out and ran away. Because Gideon trusted the Lord, the Israelites beat the large Midianite army with only 300 soldiers. The Lord freed the people of Israel. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, Lord, I will lead. Yes, Lord, I will lead. This is the picture. I don't have my pointer with me, so I'm not going to spend much time on this. But in the middle of that map is Manasseh. It's where Gideon, the yellow part in the middle there, mm -hmm. is where Gideon uh, was from. It's where Gideon was from. Um, point number one. Question about God's presence. He was identified as a mighty warrior. And God came to him to profess the life that he should be living up to. In other words, God had plans for Gideon. And I've been harping on this all month long and coming into the new year, 
telling you, Bethlehem, that you are a mighty warrior. You are a mighty warrior, and some of you would uh, think of us just like Gideon and think we can't have an impact for the kingdom of God. We think that we don't have enough people. We think we don't have enough money. Um, but I try to challenge you, it's not about the people, it's about a, how much God you believe. All right. Because if you want to do the numbers in this text, how many people um, are we talking about right now in the text? 300. No, 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 no. Right now in the text. 32,000. No, 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 right now in the text. One, thank you. <laughs> There's one person right now. One person. Get in. One person that God would choose to come against. A hundred and thirty thousand or more Midianite soldiers. Oh, Christians don't know God. Uh, because they don't know how to do God kind of mad. Um, and we've been conditioned to believe that we must have the numbers to win. We must have the numbers. We must have the people. And I've been sent to this generation to let you know you really don't need a lot of people. One person can change the world who believe uh, in God. One. Oh, that church ain't got nothing but five members, I used to hear people say. And I used to think, well, the Bible says that wherever there are two or three, hello somebody, gathered in his name that he's in the midst, they're, they're at a mega church yeah. if they serve a mega God. Yeah. Right. Yes, Let me tell you, oh, Bethlehem, you're a mega church. Oh, you're a mega church not because of who shows up here on a weekly basis. You're a mega church because you believe in a mega God. One person. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. It started with one person, not only that, it started with one person with a bad attitude. <laughs> right, right. We like to think in order to be used of God, we got to have it all together. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. ah, we, we, we think that in order to be used of God, he called him a mighty warrior. Why would he call him that when they didn't even have an army? Right. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody. Oh, God is calling you, Bethlehem, and you individually to let you know that you are a mighty warrior. But this person had a bad attitude because he began to ask questions. Hello, somebody. And the first question that he had to ask was a question about God's presence. He said, oh, I think God might want Wait a minute, pardon me, my Lord. Gideon require, uh, uh, re replied, but if the Lord is with us, then why has all this happened to us? Right, right, right. Hello, somebody. Questioning God, they remind you of something? Mm, yes, sir. What did it remind you of? Sunday school. Hello, Sunday school! And all oh, Brother David in the text uh, asking God, why are you, why are you start, start standing off a far distance? Why you ain't helping me or us in a time of trouble, Lord? You are at a, at a, at a far away distance. Yeah, right. Somebody's listening right here at the sound of my voice because uh, of the trials, because of the tribulation, because of the sin in your life. Uh, you're wondering why God has Forgotten you, why God has forsaken you, why God has, uh, oh, why God seems to be far off from you. Yes, Lord. Gideon had the audacity to ask this question. Yes. 
When the people of God and the nation had run out to other gods. Hello, mm -hmm. somebody. Yes. Mm -hmm. 83% of Americans mm, right. claim to be what? Christian. Christian! We learned that in Sunday school. Mm -hmm. Christian. But you know why, how, how impressed God is with claims? Right. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Yeah. Do, right. do you know how impressed God is with claims? Mm -hmm. These people claim to be the people of God. Mm -hmm. But they were living unholy, ungodly. They were right. worshiping on the mountaintop of the gods. That's right. Yeah. Good. And, and, and as I always say, my God has a real healthy self-esteem. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. Because you either worship him and him alone or nothing. Right. All right. Yeah. Some women in marriages say, well, well, he can, he can cheat on the side as long as he don't bring anything home. As long as he don't embarrass me. Hello, that's, that's, that's not a healthy self-esteem. Hello, somebody. God don't allow his people to creep. Well, somebody get that on the way Hello, somebody. Mm. And, 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 and Gideon had the audacity to ask God about his presence when God should have been asking him about their presence. They thought that God had forsaken them, but they had forsaken God. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Yeah. And if you're here today, and then you're in a time of trouble, and, and, and you think that God is far off from you, you may need to check your life. Amen. You may need to check your life. I, I, I shared on the, the Word from the Lord television program this weekend about there was a time in my life that I called God. And this was the worst time of my life. The worst time of my life. Now, I was living for God, oh, ever since the age of 19. Uh, but around the age of 21, 22, I made a choice that was against God's will. Mm -hmm. Him and your boy was God's favorite. That's the way I felt before that time. I was God's favorite. God favors me. Yeah. <laughs> when I made that choice, guess what? I lost God's favor. And it felt like God was standing far off from me. Hello, David. It felt like, oh, that the Lord wasn't with me. It felt like that, that when the sun raised, it wasn't rising to give me the sunshine. It was burning on my head because I made a decision that was outside of the will of God. And I suffered the consequences about 10 years of my life. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. God is not a respecter of person. You can make the right choice yesterday and, and choose to do wrong today and see what happens. All right. Mm -hmm. God has a healthy self esteem. Gideon had the audacity, but, 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 but Lord. But if the Lord is with us, why has all of this happened? It happened because you sinned against God. It happened because you were a rebellious people against God. People have a little short memory. Hello, yes, yes, we do. Uh -huh. yeah. We think it's God when it's really our own character and behavior that's yeah. the problem. Uh -huh. yes. Deuteronomy 31 and, and, and 17 says, On the day my anger was born, a uh, burn against them. What did he say? And I will abandon them and hide my face from them. Oh, so that they will what? Be consumed and what? Leave God out and see what happens. <laughs> That's a healthy self-esteem. And some of you are struggling. Oh, with what's going on in your life and why are you having to deal with what you're dealing with right now? God says uh, things can change for you, but you've got to repent. All right. Yes, yes. And there's some stuff, even when 
when you repent, you still have to suffer the consequences of it. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody. That's why we say, oh, those who are in prison and then may be on death row for killing somebody who actually killed somebody and give their life to Jesus Christ. Oh, their soul can be saved, but it doesn't mean that their body will. Amen. Because of the consequences. Amen. Our God don't play. He is a consuming fire. And we live in a nation that's playing with God. 83% believe that they are Christians. With the lifestyle that they are living. All right, all right, amen. As I said before, God ain't impressed with a church full of folk that leave him out. Mm -hmm. amen. That's living unholy, that's living ungodly. Right, right. Hello, somebody. Amen. Hello, somebody. That's the kind of testimony that people don't want to be a part of the church because the folk in the church ain't even living right. Your business all out on the street. Hello, somebody. Boy, if I began to name names. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody. Because mm -hmm. they always seem to get back to me. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. One time, I got an ominous phone call. Like somebody was, was, uh, I have to try to, uh, what's it called, extort money, because they had dirt on one of our members. Mm -hmm. Hell, somebody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That member, they saw his car at a place at night. Mm -hmm. He thought he was creeping. Yeah. Hell, somebody. Guess what? You can't creep on God. Well. Because what you do in the dark is going to come to the light. There were consequences that that person paid. Mm -hmm. It's a question. Question. He had the audacity to question God. I always say, be careful. You, you can't question God, but you better be ready for the answers. Well. <laughs> Ask old brother Job. Yes, Point number two. A question about God's power. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where are all your wonders that, that our ancestors told us about? Where, where are your wonders, God? Many times, many churches don't have wonders. The greatest wonder a church can have is folk getting saved. Amen. That's the greatest miracle. Amen. Help somebody. The greatest miracle. As I said, it on, I said on Wednesday night, it was the same situation with Samuel. And again, you do that Christian godly math. In that text, God chose one person, Samuel. Samuel was in a mist of a church, and I'll put it in New Testament terms, where the preacher's sons oh, yeah. was running through the church. That's right. And the preacher wouldn't do anything about it. It was utter, utter chaos. And God had a little boy put in the midst of all of that chaos. Right. You thought, Lord, I don't want my boy to be in a church like that. Woo. Bedside Baptist, I don't want my chap, my boy to be there. And, and with the den of thieves, just one boy. One, one boy who, raised, who got raised up in the church, who didn't recognize God's voice at first, but once he recognized God's voice, Voice, the message was, yes, God, I will listen. Ah, yeah. oh, that one boy would trans or metamorphosize the temple. And God told him, I got a message for that preacher. Who <laughs> yes. allowed his sons to run, oh, in the, uh, uh, in the church and act like the church was a club or a brothel. Hello, son. 
somebody. Right. I'm about to clean you out. And I'm going to use this one boy that most folk wouldn't want to be a part of the church. Hello, somebody. Oh, God needs one person. Mm, all right. He used that one person to metamorphosize the temple and metamorphosize oh, the whole people of God as they turn their heart back towards God. And, and, and the unique thing about that text is that at that time there were not many visions. Mm, mm, all right. This text, not many wonders. Mm -hmm. Because God will not. Be unsanctified. In other words, God won't use an unholy vessel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great illustration of that was that of the high priest. Mm -hmm. And why they had to tie a rope around him when he went into the holiest of holies. Because if he wasn't living holy or righteous, he would what? He would ah. die. And they had to drag him out. <laughs> How God has a healthy self-esteem. You may be wondering, well, Lord, uh, uh, why, are you, why are you standing at a distance from me? Why are you not with me in a time of trouble? God says, because you have abandoned me. You're wondering, you wanted me to work in awesome and powerful and mighty ways in your life. Oh, you want to see the wonders. Which for Jesus, many times, that was a... Say, them people want to see signs and wonders. You don't even know God. How do you expect to see signs and well, wonders? Well, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't even know him. You're part of religion. Well. Just like Samuel mm -hmm. didn't know the voice of God. That's right. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. God still has wonders and power, Bethlehem, but we've got to anoint it upon ourselves and live holy and live righteously. Oh, so that the signs and wonders, not that we worship him for that, but oh, we want to Bethlehem. Thanks, Lord, in 2024. The only way that's going to happen is we're going to have to be holy mm -hmm. in 2024. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. We want the signs and wonders. I mean, we're going for the gusto there. Oh, that's the greatest miracle that can happen. Oh, the Sunday school teacher said that it, uh, his preacher uh, once said there is that God can change things through prayer, but he can also what? Change people. Amen. Ooh. Yeah. That's soul salvation. The only way a person can really change is soul salvation. Right, right. Yeah. Amen. Let me say that. Mm -hmm. The only way a person can change mm -hmm. is soul salvation. And, and you began a transformation process, a metamorphosis will begin to happen in truth. And God will change your character into Christ's character to the point that people won't be able to recognize who you are. Friends won't be able to recognize who you are. They come up to you cussing and cursing and you and, 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 and you're not cussing and cursing no more. Mm, all right. Hello, somebody. <laughs> yeah. Friends uh, I'll call you up and say, come on, I, I got a brew for you. Let's get full. <laughs> yeah. and, and you say, oh, no, thank you. All right. All right. <laughs> it's got pain. Yeah. Let's go up the whole city and run them streets. Hello, somebody. He said, oh, no. I don't do that no more. Mm. You, you would have changed. That's the power of God. And we're asking God to do in 2024. The most powerful thing that he can do is change people. And if we're going to reach more in 2024, we've got to be holy so that his presence can settle in this place. Ooh. So his power can settle upon your life and you become a witness. People always, when you talk about witnessing, you always want to be Billy Graham, the witness. You ain't got to be Billy Graham, the witness. Amen. You witness every day. Yeah. That's right. You good, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you say, preacher, how, what do you mean I witness every day? You witness about the food that you eat? Yeah. Right. 
You know, young people today, they take a picture of the food and put it out there on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> they witness it. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Yeah. They, they, they witness about the vacation they have, the cars that they have. Right. They're pitching it and posting it and tweeting it or exiting now. Hello, somebody. They're witnessing. Oh, when you come into a true come, a relationship with God, you won't be able but to help to witness. Right, right. Hello, somebody. As people see the picture of your life and how it has changed. Question God's power. You question God's power. Something always just hit me, and I remember I. Lot. I forgot who the original quote was from, but Sunday school, I heard it from him. Say, God doesn't have favorites. Mm -hmm. He just has what? Intimacy. Intimates. Right. Hello, son. Right. <laughs> right. Hello, son. Do you know that, who those intimates are? Mm -hmm. People who live holy! Yeah. Now, they ain't perfect. You see, in this text, Gideon wasn't perfect. He had questions. Right, right. Hello, somebody, but God used him. Mm -hmm. David wasn't perfect. He was asking questions. But guess yeah. what? God, God used him. Yeah, he did. We learned all of December that God uses unlikely people. Why you think you got to be Pastor E. Time to do something for the Lord? Lord. Mm. And Pastor E. Time, mm. forgive my French, mm. ain't nobody. Mm. <laughs> mm. He's just a nobody trying to tell. All right. Everybody what? About somebody. About somebody who can, can do it. Who can say everybody. everybody reach more in 2024. We all need to be nobodies. Hello, somebody. Amen. If we want to see the power of God, you got a question of the power of God. Look at yourself in Jesus' name. Judges 6 1 says, and against the Israelite did evil in the sight of the Lord. And what did he do? Here's your answer, Gideon. You want to know why Yahweh delivered over to the Midianites? Here's the answer. What was it? So they did evil. And it's interesting how God put this. Did evil in the sight of the Lord. Why do you think he said it that way? He sees everything. He sees, it. <laughs> he sees everything. Amen. Amen. See, 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 some of them thought they were sneaking up on a mountain and yeah. privately worshiping. Mm -hmm. Only one problem. God can see it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. See, God sees you. Oh, what you doing? In the privacy of your own home. Oh, in your, in, in your man cave. Those magazines that, that you had hidden in the basement. Woo. Nowadays, he sees that pornography that's on your very phone that you have. Woo! Because you don't have to sneak into back rooms anymore. That phone can be one of the most evil devices that you have, that computer. But it's really not the phone or the computer. It's right. what's in your heart. That's it. Amen. Amen. Hello, somebody. It's what's in your heart. So, so they were doing evil in the sight of the Lord, and everywhere is the sight of the Lord. That's what we got to remember. Because uh, uh, Christian religious folks, they, they, they think they're good. They come to church on Sunday and worship God, and Oh, and they go out and live all kind of raggedy lives on yeah. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, yeah. Friday. Hello, somebody. God sees all your weeks, all your hours, right. all your minutes, all your seconds. You got questions about God's power? You got questions about God's presence? And ain't got questions about how you living? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Woo. Against the Israelites, they, again, the Israelites, and this says again. What does again signify? They kept doing it. it wasn't the first time. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. They did evil. And God, what did he do? He delivered them into the hands of Midian for seven years. For seven years. He had questions. Question about the presence of God, question about the power of God. And then he even had his pick, God's pick. What, 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 what did he say? Pardon me again, my Lord. This is Gideon, that same Gideon, that Gideon Bible that you, that you see in uh, hotels. You open up the book, open up the top shelf. Most hotels, it's a Gideon Bible in it. It's the same Gideon. Who replied, but how can I save Israel? And this is what he said. My clan is the weakest in Manasseh. And I am the least in my family. I'm, I'm the baby of the family. Ain't nobody going to listen to me. They're going to listen to Sister Arthur because she's the oldest. They'll listen to Sister Etan because she's the oldest in their family. I'm the baby. Ain't nobody going to listen to me, Lord. Hello, somebody. Excuses. Mm -hmm. Excuses. Uh, 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 my clan is the weakest. My family ain't even as big as the Jones family. And I hear almost every family back in the day in West Ham. I heard y'all had them packed up in the houses down here. <laughs> Everybody had a big family. <laughs> Nine, ten, eight children. Hello, somebody. Ten. Hello, somebody. Hello. But, but, but my, my claim, my, but we, ain't, we ain't that big. God ain't interested in your excuses. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Especially when he's already chose you. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me say that again, because some of you ain't realized that you've been chosen. Well. Some, some, some of you ain't realize you've been you've been chosen to lead God's people. You've been chosen. And all he wants is you to get busy for what he called you to do. For you to use your gifts, talents, and abilities in the service of the Lord right here at Bethlehem Baptist Church. He has plans. If you can sing, you need to what? Sing for the glory of God. If you can teach, you need to teach for the glory of God. If you have the gift of hospitality, then you need to be serving as an usher or in the food ministry. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. You've been chosen. He don't want to hear your excuses. You say, Lord, I'm weak. God says, yes. What did he tell Paul? Yeah. And that was a thorn in his flesh. What did he tell him? My strength is made perfect. Yeah. My strength is made perfect in weakness. I said on the national broadcast, now Pastor Eton was in Dallas, Texas, pastoring a mega church. Oh, they could only give those circumstances God God and not give God to glory. But for Pastor Eton to be in 180 million households and, and 29 million on cable from the Bethlehem Baptist Church here in Paul's Valley, that ain't nothing but God. All right. Hello, somebody. He, he gets the glory because he picked me. Hello, somebody. Well, right. and, and I believe that he can do oh, exceedingly abundantly above anything that I ask, think, or imagine, and he can do it. Oh, wherever I step my feet, as long as I believe that I may not serve at a mega church, but I do serve a mega God. Is there anybody here believe in the God that I serve? All right, amen. Right. Yes. Right. Is there anybody here believe in the God that I serve? Do you believe that we can reach more in 2024? Uh, I believe that we can. All right. Yes. Hello, somebody.
Let me say it again. I believe that we can. Don't question his pick. Who he going to use? He going to use you. There you go. Amen. Yeah. Use me, Lord. He's going to use you. I love what the Sunday school teacher said at Sunday school. In the same words of Isaiah. Mm -hmm. What did he say? Here I am, Lord. In this text, he chose one. In Wednesday's text, he chose one. Hello, somebody. H Hello, somebody. A hundred and thirty thousand people started out with one. Hello, somebody. Boy, that text is so, so, it, it, it blows my mind because I think they started out at 22,000. I said, oh, that's too much. <laughs> Wait a minute, Lord, don't you know the math? Over 130,000, we got 20. We already are now, Lord. And you say we, we got too many? Hello, somebody. We got too many? Okay, Lord. Now we got 10,000. Okay, let's do it. We, we still outnumbered almost 10 to 1. Okay, let's go at it. You still got too many. You don't hear this in, on television. Again, God ain't impressed with a crowd of people that don't believe in him. He ain't impressed with the 83% of who say that they are Christians in America. 10,000, still too many. 300. That's almost been, that's always been my prayer. Lord, just give me the 300. Mm -hmm. I've always said that because I, I have been a part of two major mega churches, and what I've seen in those churches, oh, when we said we had 3,000, there was only 300 really doing the work. Mm -hmm. So I always say, Lord, I don't need that crowd, just give me the 300. All right. Another church, oh, we, we said we had about 5,000, but it seemed like there was only about 400 who was doing all the work. Mm -hmm. All of, everybody else just showing up on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Hell somebody. Mm -hmm. God ain't impressed with that. He's only impressed with people who believe in, in what he says. And who would take him at his word. You have been chosen today. All right. Come on, I'm on. Let me look at the time. Oh, man, I'm already over. I'm going to tell this story and I'm going to leave. Oh. In Dallas, Texas, on a street called Aztec, there is a Hall of Fame for football. And in the Aztec Hall of Fame, for football, it's Pastor Eton's name. I was cold-bloody back in the day. Yeah. People thought I was going to make the pros. Okay, and, and I was pretty cold. Um, but puberty hit. It hit everybody else but me. <laughs> and they grow bigger and stronger. But, 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 but in those days, I would have been a number one pick when we were young. But to be the pick after that wouldn't have been a good choice, like Gideon said. <laughs> hey, Lord, I'm the weakest. I can't, I can't do nothing with them boys. My high school. At that time, was known to send the most numbers to South Oak Cliff Bears. There was known to have sent more pros, more players to the pros right, than right. any high school at that time. I, I think it may be different now, but at that time, we had sent more players to the pros. Mm -hmm. and I step on. Nah. I don't think that. <laughs> right, right. Mm. So I was like, Gideon. Hello, somebody. God didn't choose me to play ball. Well, all right. He chose me to preach. All right. Yes, sir. Hello, somebody. Yeah. God didn't choose you to do 
some of the other stuff that you may have dreamed of mm. growing up. Well, go ahead. Yeah. Tell somebody. But guess what? You're still his choice. Mm. <laughs> Don't argue about his choice. Mm -hmm. Yes, Sister Jocelyn, you chose to teach. Teach the word. And Sister Eton chose to teach. Sunday school, teach the word. I'm always, it always messes with my mind when Sunday school comes about because this computer will act right, right every day of the week. But when it's time to do Sunday school, it be flipping out. This morning I had to uh, go in and sign in three different times in three different ways and when I got it set up and we tried to just change the view it closed down All right. that might be it <laughs> I think so too but I give the little that I have <laughs> or, God, or the devil doesn't want Amen. God's teaching there you, go. you see this is God's teaching. Yeah, yeah. All right. See, he don't mind preaching. Because mm. some people can hear preaching and get nothing from it. Mm. Well, but right. this is God's solid teaching. Mm. This is studying the lesson all week long and coming together full and, and to hear and to get more and to learn more. This is teaching. That was like, ah, God, I need to shut this down. No, no, just all around trying to stop it. Tell somebody. That's why he don't want you to be in Sunday school. Right, right. Amen. He don't want you to be in Wednesday Bible study and, right. and, and those solid places where teaching can happen. Mm -hmm. Right. Tell somebody. He, 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 he wants you to be here on Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. um, I was at the uh, Legacy Pharmacy and uh, trying to get my medicine I was supposed to get. Lady, they said, Oh, hi, Pastor Eton. I didn't know she knew me. She said, I was in the service at Ecclesia on, uh, on, 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 on that night, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the watch night. Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, Pastor Eton, nobody can hear your preaching and fall asleep. Mm. Well. And I said, well. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well. <laughs> All I need to know is if I could package it, I'd put day quail, night quail out of business. <laughs> Tell somebody. I can't be chosen. I'll just do what he said do. That's it. Amen. Well, I can, whether I'm an expert at it or not, I just, I just right. give him everything. Mm -hmm. yeah, give him everything. Tell somebody. The devil don't want, want that recording because when I when I play it later the night, it's not uncommon to have 200 mirrors. Hmm. All right. Tell right. somebody. Praise the Lord. Teaching. Hmm. Teaching. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. I love it. I love it. Amen. Anyway, I'm out of time. Mm -hmm. All eyes close heads about Saint mm -hmm. Supreme. Father God, yes, help us not to question mm -hmm. your presence, but yes, to look in our lives to see the presence of sin that is stopping us. Mm -hmm. Help us, Lord, not to question your power, but to come to our senses like they could pick. Mm -hmm. Ain't none of us perfect, Lord. And we won't be perfect until Jesus comes back again yes. on that great getting up morning. Yes. Mm -hmm. But help us to give ourselves our all in all to you. Yes, Lord. Father God, it is a sincere desire mm -hmm. for our church. This vision was born out of a prayer. Mm -hmm. Lord, help us to reach more mm -hmm. in 2024. Yes, Lord. 
And we know, Lord, in order to do that, we've got to look at our lives and we've got to sanctify ourselves. Right. So, Father God, I pray that you forgive us of our sins, wash us and cleanse us. And we might be in right relationship with you. And when we leave this place, we might be vessels of your grace and your mercy. And through us, Lord, enable us to reach more in 2024. Yeah. I believe today in your power, Father. Same way, believe in your power for this late first ladies and ministers' wives and widows' conference. How you led us to do it on faith, didn't have anything. Visiting the site, didn't have nothing. But believe, Lord, that you were calling us to do it. And before it was all said and done, women all over, really the nation in Oklahoma was encouraged in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Yes, sir. In Jesus' name. We thank you, Father. Help us all to take you at your word, Lord. Maybe as a ministry, you want us to start that is not here. That you've given us the vision for. Father, help us to manifest it. Oh, because you don't have a problem with doing something new. Because you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And many times we just act like that you're the God of 1950. That you're the God of 1960. And we frown on new things, Father. But Lord, we're praying that you will send some new wine to this place. A new wine that bubbling. Now, old wine is good. Oh, we're not uh, abandoning the old wine, but oh, Lord, we need some new wine in this place. Ah, oh, to bubble in Jesus' name and help us to bubble like we first got saved. When we first got saved, oh, we couldn't talk about anything else, but the Lord folk got tired of us. Oh, and saw us coming and headed in the uh, opposite direction because, oh, they know that all they was going to hear about was Jesus. Oh, all they was going to hear about was the Son of God. All they was going to hear about is what happened in church on Sunday in the Word that was preached. Oh, in the Word that was taught in Sunday school. Lord, oh, set us a fire. Set us a blaze. Use us, Lord, to reach more in 2024. In Jesus' name, I believe by faith. In Jesus' name, that you can continue to do exceedingly abundantly above anything we ask, think, or imagine for your glory that you may get whole glory in our stories. It's all about you. You chose me. You chose uh, uh, them, Father. And for you, it was a good choice. Not perfect, but willing. In Jesus' name. Our lives continually close. Saints of praying before we leave this place. We want to make sure that everybody today here is saved. When you're saved, you become sanctified. You change. And, and my fear is we have some Samuels in the place. Verse 7 of Wednesday nights. Study said that at that time Samuel did not know God. His mother was a Holy Ghost filled, fiery Christian woman who manifests his birth through the power of prayer. And made a commitment to God that if you gave me this son, I'm going to give him back to you. And she literally left him at the church, the temple. He was raised by the priest. The unique thing that it said about him, he slept in 
the presence of the Ark of the Covenant. In New Testament times or in our times, he slept in the church on the front row next to this table. But the Bible said that he didn't know God at that time, so much so when God called his voice, he ran to the preacher. See, when you know God's voice, you don't have to run to anybody. Called his voice another time and he ran to the preacher. At that time, he did not know God. He, his mama was a Christian. He grew up in the church, literally, literally grew up in the church, literally slept in the presence of the Ark of God. Did not know God until the preacher told him to say, yes, Lord. I'm listening. He had to get to his yes, and today you must get to your yes because you may have been, or oh, your mama may have been saved. You may have believed that, oh, that you were raised in the church, or know that you were raised in the church. You've been coming all this time and do not know God. You must give your life to Jesus Christ. You must say yes to him. Yes, yes. And your yes ah, must be the beginning of transformation, a metamorphosis. So you can't know God and stay the same. We have some so-called saints in the church and, and, and they've been the same, the same old honorary person 30 years ago. Same today. Same old lying and scheming person from 20 years to today. Nothing has changed. You may identify as the 83% in America. But if you don't know him and his voice, if you've never given your life sincerely to Jesus Christ, believe that Jesus Christ was the Son of God, that he died for your sins, was buried, and raised again on the third day, then today you can be saved. One preacher said that God don't have any grandchildren. That's right. You can't get it through your mama. Her name may be on the window. You can't get it through your daddy. His name may be on the window can't even get it from the preacher whose name is on the way. You must get it for your sin. Is there one today who will slip out of their seat and give their life to Jesus Christ? Slip out right now in Jesus' name. Is there one? Is there one? Christ up in front of the church here. You can come and talk to me a little later. And then your, 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 your first profession of faith will be baptism. And baptism is the number one indicator of your obedience to God. And it's symbolic of you dying to sin and being raised to walk in newness of life. That's true Christianity. So you can talk to me later. Also, you may be here and you don't have a church on. You've been coming. We want you to be a part of the body of Christ right here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church. I said we want you to be a part of the body of Jesus Christ right here at the Baptist, at the Bethlehem Baptist Church. You can come right now. Any other decision to pray? Recommit your life. We're out of time, so would everyone please stand as I give the benediction. Father God, we pray today. Day is a commissioning. 
You said today that you chose everyone in this place to serve you, to give their gifts, talents, and abilities that the body of Christ may be edified and that you may be glorified. Right. Right. You chose us all to go and tell a lost and dying world about a living Savior. We thank you, Father, put your heads of protection around us. Keep us safe from all harm and danger until we meet again. As the people of God said, Oh, my God.